If you're watching this, you're probably thinking about marketing. You're probably nervous and anxious about it. And I'll tell you, I don't blame you. Book marketing is a weird world and it is very nerve wracking for a lot of people because they don't understand how it works. And it seems very ambiguous and uncertain. And it seems like there's just an overwhelming amount of stuff to be done. I get it. I've been there before. I'm going to walk you through exactly how you need to be thinking about this, what you need to do and how to do what you need to do. Part one, how to think about book marketing. Most people teach and think about book marketing in a way that doesn't work for the authors that work with us, right? So I'm gonna give you two frames for book marketing and I'm gonna come back to these again and again and again over this course. Do not, in fact, I won't let you forget these, so I'm not gonna tell you not to forget them. The first one I'm gonna explain is a book is a marketing tool, not the thing you market. Now, a lot of people think if they're gonna get visibility from a book, what they have to do is become a famous best-selling writer who sells millions of copies. Because isn't that the best way to get visibility for a book, right? No, it's actually not. And I'm saying that as a dude who actually was a famous best-selling writer who sold millions of books. That doesn't actually work well, right? It's not that it's bad to have the goal of being a famous writer or selling lots of books. It's just that it's utterly unrealistic for you and it usually is gonna hurt you in your actual goals. So let me explain. Uh, first off, to give you some perspective, there are about 300,000 new books published every year in America. In fact, I think that number's even gone up. I think last year it was 500,000. And the company that measures book sales in America, it's called BookScan. It estimates that about 200 books, 200 books per year, give or take, sell even 100,000 copies, right? So think about that for a minute. 200 sell 100,000 copies and less than two dozen sell a million. And most of those are novels, by the way. It's extremely rare for a nonfiction book to sell a million copies in a year. I've sold three million copies, that's over 10 years, counting four books. Furthermore, goals trade off. If your goal is to sell millions of copies, that means you've got to write a book that's appealing, at least in theory, to millions and millions of people. That's extraordinarily hard to do, right? That's why professional writers have to spend all their time writing because finding a topic that appeals to a lot of people and then writing an original book about that is extraordinarily hard, right? So what, we're, what we actually are gonna tell you again and again and again as an author is you should be writing a, a book that is has a very narrow topic that reaches a very narrow audience, but that goes a mile deep with them. So an inch wide and a mile deep, that should be your goal. Because if you have a small audience that you are the complete authority to, that's gonna help you way more as a conventional author than going an inch deep and a mile wide. That works for Malcolm Gladwell, doesn't work for you because you're not a professional author, you have a business, or you're a consultant, or you're a coach, or you're a doctor, or in, you're some other type of service professional or business person, or you're an executive. If you have a day job, a real job, the book is not intended for to turn you into Tim, Tim Ferriss or Malcolm Gladwell or Seth Godin. The book is intended to make you better at your job. So the book should be geared at the people you serve in your job, not everyone in America. We like to say that our clients don't want a book, they want what a book gets them. Think about that for a second. Most clients come to us, they say things like, in fact, there's three main categories of benefits our clients ask for. They want a book to get them visibility, Right? So that means authority in their field, credibility in their field. They want to be seen in a new way with potential clients, with peers, things like that. Makes a lot of sense and a book is very good at that. The second thing that our clients uh, ask for a lot is more opportunity. They want a book to generate opportunity for them, whether that's bring more clients or uh, drive uh, more sort of meetings or, or open doors or get them speaking gigs or uh, get them media. In some way, shape, or form, they want a book to open doors and create opportunities that didn't exist. The third thing that clients really look for is legacy, 
right? This is a, a minority of clients, but still quite a lot. They want a book to leave something behind. They want it to tell their story or to tell part of their story. They want it to show what they've contributed to their culture, their society, their world. And that's totally fine. All of that makes sense. None of those three things, visibility, opportunity, or legacy, are about being a famous professional writer or selling millions of books, right? That you have to define those things narrowly for you in a way that makes sense for you and your career, not in a way that would make sense for Michael Lewis or JK Rowling. So because of all this, because you're not a professional writer, you need a different model for book marketing. And the better model for you is the one I told you about. A book is a marketing tool to get you things like visibility, opportunity, and legacy. It's not the thing that you market, right? For Again, a professional writer, they've got to go market their book to get people to buy copies of their book. That's the only way they make money. That's their entire job. Your job is to use the book to help you in your actual job. See the difference here? Once you understand this, it makes book marketing really easy and it makes it really understandable as opposed to trying to think, oh God, how am I gonna, how am I gonna do what Seth Godin does? You're not going to. So don't think of it that way. That's what this entire course is oriented around, teaching you how to use your book in the way that helps you, not trying to be Seth Godin. The second frame we're gonna talk about that's really important for you is understanding that book marketing is a long-term process and not a single event. Now look, I know in the first part, I crushed all your dreams about being a famous professional writer and selling millions of books and hitting the bestseller list, okay? But look, even if you knew that was a fantasy, I get that's still a little bit of a letdown, right? Because everyone kind of has that fantasy. But there's a good side to this. As someone who's lived that and who's run bestseller campaigns and massive launches for famous authors like Tim Ferriss and others, I can tell you that process sucks. Running a big book launch is awful. It is hundreds of moving parts. It's an immense amount of work. And it's not a full-time job for one person. It's a full-time job for a team of people. The only way you can have a big book launch is if you have an existing established audience and you have a clear way to reach them and you are basically a professional entertainer. It's like, it's terrible. I, I got out of that business because I hated it so much. It sucks, right? But what's really cool about this is looking at book marketing, not as a single launch, but as a process, as a set of things that you do over time, totally changes everything for you. Now, as we helped you understand in the, the last uh, frame, you have really three categories of goals, visibility, opportunity, and legacy right? So instead of trying to launch your book and generate all this attention in one week, which doesn't really make any sense, the better option for you is to see your book as a marketing tool that you can use consistently over the next two, three, five, maybe even 10 years to help you generate visibility and opportunity and even legacy for yourself. All you have to do are a few things each week and sometimes even less than that for the book to work for you and generate visibility and opportunity for you. So to give you an idea of what it looks like when it's done right, we've attached three case studies from authors of ours, John Rulin, Deb Gabor, and Bob Glazer. All three of them basically did something very similar in that they wrote the book, then they used the book to get either media attention or attention from clients which then drove other opportunities, right? So let's just take John, for example. John wrote a book called Giftology. He used this book to triple his speaking fee, uh, to, to go from doing five to six keynotes a year, I think now he's doing 25 keynotes a year. Uh, he has doubled the size of his consulting business, I believe. He's attracted extraordinarily high uh, status and high profile clients like professional sports teams and Fortune 500 companies. And he's gotten a flood of media, all because of the book. But it didn't happen in one week. It didn't even happen in two months. It happened over the course of a year or more, right? It built and built and built. Deb Gabor did something very similar. Bob Glazer did something very similar. You can read the specifics in the case studies 
that outline exactly how they use their books over time to drive the results that we're looking for. The most important thing in the case studies to look for is how they didn't try and emulate Tim Ferriss or Seth Godin or Malcolm Gladwell or Michael Lewis. They didn't try and pretend they were professional writers. They used the book as a marketing tool, principle one, and they also looked at the book as an ongoing process and not a single launch, principle two. They both emulated exactly what we're gonna teach you and they all three of them have gotten amazing results. So I'm gonna end the introduction with the number one rule for all book marketing. And this applies to all authors, from the most famous to the least famous and everyone in between, doesn't matter who you are, this rule applies to everyone. And it's gonna sound really harsh and it's gonna sound actually mean even, but it's kind of designed that way to get you out of your fantasies and into reality so you can use your book to drive results for you. The rule is no one cares about your book they only care about what your book can do for them, All right? Let me say that again. No one cares about your book. They only care about what your book can do for them. In fact, let me even go a step further. No one cares how hard you worked on your book. No one cares uh, uh, that you want them to read your book. No one cares anything at all about anything in your book, except as it benefits them.